Welcome back to Shed Talks. I have not done one of these in a while, but it is time to do a few of them. I'm going to be doing a four-part series on drugs in triathlon. This clearly was sparked by the positive EPO test by Colin Chartier that broke yesterday. Massive amount of social media around it, people posting stuff that just it got me thinking. The purpose of this series, these four parts, is to ask ourselves, what is it about drug testing that we just sort of, or, or use of drugs, drug testing, drug results, what are the parts of it that we just kind of tolerate that maybe we could do something more about? Because it's ridiculous how somebody tests positive, they go, gee, I'm sorry, walk away, nothing happens. The fourth part of this series is going to be the unsung hero in all of this. So you're going to want to listen to all of them. So the first question I have is, why did this blow up? I mean, there's been positive drug tests in triathlon over the years, and nothing has reached this level of massive social media posting yesterday. And I think part of it is that Colin Chartier, a couple things. He won Ironman Montreal Blanc last August, comes back in September, wins PTO Dallas Open, two very big races, his two best performances ever in his career at a time where he was working with Mikal Eden, Gustav Eden's brother, who is a coach. He was living with Lionel Sanders, training with Lionel Sanders. He had been training in Girona, where Jan Frodeno and cycling teams from all over the world train, tons of athletes training there. So this is a, an athlete who has been around and associated with a lot of top people in the sport. So everybody's mind goes to the question, Colin tested positive. Who else is doping out there? Who knew that he was doping? Who helped him dope? All of these questions came up and he denied that anything that anybody else was doing affected him, that he did it all on his own. But regardless, it's time to talk about some of this stuff. So the first thing that I wanna talk about and the first three are gonna be the things that we tolerate about, about drug testing, about doping, about results. The first is we tolerate somebody saying, I knew, other, I knew other people were doping out there. That's why I did it. That's what Colin said in an interview. He said that I know the top guys are doping and I just knew there's no way I could beat them. I wanted to be the best in the world and I can't do it without doping. But then later in the interview, he said, I don't know who's doping. Well, you just said they're doping, but then you said they're not doping. We tolerate that. We tolerate somebody saying, yeah, everybody's doping, but I don't know who is. And I'm not here to, to, to be a, a judge, jury, lawyer, an interrogator for Colin Chartier's interviews or what he's said or anybody else's, and I'm not here to implicate anybody else. I'm here to ask us as a sporting population, what is it about all of this that we tolerate? How can we change it so that the sting for testing positive goes way deeper than just getting banned for a year or two years or three years or four years. We tolerate an athlete saying, I know everybody at the top of the sport is, is, is taking drugs. I can't win without it, so I needed to do it. But I don't know who they are. What's the solution? Probably we can't do it but hook them up to a friggin' lie detector machine. Run down the list of every top pro. Does this person dope? Does that person dope? Does the other one dope? See what the results are. Go down the list of coaches. Does this coach give his athletes or her athletes something? Go down the list of doctors working with sports people. What are they telling you? What are they providing? What are they giving? Are they giving? Go deep into these investigations. Go where, where, where you can't lie. Somebody who's taking drugs, EPO, they're lying. They're saying, I'm, I'm racing clean, I'm racing strong, I'm racing because I'm such a good athlete and I'm training well. You're racing well because you do all, all of the training right, but then you add drugs into it. You're a liar. So stick them up to a lie detector machine. That's my solution on that one. So that we aren't here as a public going, Wow, there's so many people out there doping, but we don't know who they are. Let's find them. Stay tuned for part two. In there, I'm going to bring up the second thing we tolerate, 
And that's all the people around somebody doping who also don't say anything. Stay tuned, Shed Talks, Mark Allen. Thank you.